let's assume that uh, we have uh, a continuous function f of x. It's continuous, uh, that means that we can draw its graph uh, without any breaks on a, a specific interval. Right? It's continuous on uh, interval, the closed interval a and b. And uh, let's uh, furthermore assume that f of a is uh, strictly less than 0 and uh, f of b uh, is strictly greater than uh, 0. Since f of x is continuous on a, b, and f of a is less than 0, and f of b is greater than 0, there must be at least one x on um, an o the open interval a and b, such that f of x is 0. So, so we uh, are interested in finding uh, at least one such x. So in other words, um, what is the root of f of x? And um, uh, the so-called half uh, interval search is a pretty simple and uh, um, at the same time pretty powerful method of approximating such solutions. Uh, finding roots, approximating roots. Um, of um, f of x greater than 0. So let's say we have this continuous function f of x on a, b. This is f of b, uh, this is f of a, and um, uh, we're going to uh, take um, the midpoint to be the average of uh, a and b. So it's going to be a plus b uh, over 2. And we're going to take a, val a look at the value f of m. Right. So, um, and uh, there are three cases for uh, the value of f of m. f of m uh, can be zero. If that is the case, we are really lucky and we found the root. So we just return m, the midpoint. Um, if we are not so lucky, then uh, there are two more cases to consider. f of m uh, strictly greater than zero and uh, f of m strictly less than zero. So f of m uh, greater than 0, that's the case that is uh, shown in this uh, diagram, f of m uh, greater than 0, and we can safely discard the interval um, uh, from m to b and focus on the interval uh, uh, from a to m, right? Because f of m is greater than 0 and f of a less than 0. And so since f of x is continuous, then if there is an x, uh, it has to be uh, um, such that f of x um, uh, equals a 0, it has to be between a and m. Right, greater than a, uh, but less than uh, less than m. Okay, so um, uh, uh, f of m uh, um, uh, can also be uh, uh, less than zero. Right, uh, let's say here's a case where f of m is uh, less than uh, less than zero. This is x. This is uh, this is y y axis. So let's see. This is the graph of f of m. This is a. This is b. Uh, and let's consider this is m. So as as you can see, f of m for this function on this interval a and b is strictly uh, less than uh, zero. Right. So we have to focus on this interval. Right, uh, because if there is an x such as f of x is, uh, uh, equals zero, then it's between a and uh, m. Right, f of a uh, is uh, uh, greater than zero, and in general, m is one of the endpoints of the half interval that we're going to be uh, considering. Right, and the other uh, uh, endpoint is either a or b, depending on uh, what is the opposite side, right, uh, of um, which f uh, value, f of a or f of b, is, is, uh, has the opposite sign uh, of the value f of, uh, uh, of f of m, right? So here's another, uh, another case. So f of m is uh, less than 0. And in this case, uh, we have to consider the right sub uh, half interval, right? The right the right half interval because f of b is greater than um, uh, 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 zero, and uh, f of m is uh, less than zero. So if there is an x uh, such that f of x uh, equals zero, then it's between m and b. Okay. So um, we can sort of generalize uh, these uh, observations, right? So let's say if we have an interval a and b, and we take uh, the midpoint of the interval, then half interval search 
um, sort of behaves like a uh, uh, the binary search, right? We split um, the interval A and B into two, uh, right, at the middle, and then we go with either AM or uh, MB, right, depending on the values of F of M and uh, F of A or F of B. So F, if F of M is positive, then we have to go with f of a or f of b, which is negative. If f of m is negative, then we have to go with one or the other, f of a or f of b, um, and that value must be positive, whichever is, uh, is positive. All right. So, okay. All right, this is um, this is M, and this is this is uh, A, A, and B, and we go with one or the uh, or the other. So if we have this uh, interval, right, um, and we split it in the middle, and then um, let's say if we go with this half, um, we're gonna uh, split it. So this is A, this is B. We're going to then, next step, split this half and half, and then, um, uh, let's say, if we go with this half, we're going to split it in half, and so forth. So the question, the next question is, well, when do we stop? Well, we can define the tolerance uh, level. That's the length of the interval, um, right, at which we stop. So if we go, uh, if we have an interval of that length, 0, 0, 001, right, point zero zero one or smaller, then we just return the middle. Uh, point of that interval. Uh, so that's good enough. So whenever our interval uh, is less than uh, or equal to t, the tolerance level, we'll just return the middle point of that interval. And that's our best approximation. So let's um, mm, uh, uh, type in uh, the pseudocode. Uh, so this is our interval search. Um, so it takes a function. Uh, then it takes a negative point and a positive point. So the negative point uh, is um, where f uh, is less than zero, and the positive point is where f is greater than zero. So that has to be strictly uh, enforced. So the middle point um, uh, is the average of the negative point and the positive point. Uh, negative point, um, right? So the length of that interval, the absolute value and uh, uh, of the negative point and the positive point divided by 2. So if uh, the interval is small enough, in other words, less than or equal to the tolerance uh, value, we, we just return the midpoint. Otherwise, we consider the value of f at midpoint. And um, this is where we have three cases that we just considered. If uh, that value is uh, less than 0, then uh, we uh, will recursively search uh, the half interval of f um, from uh, uh, the uh, midpoint to the positive point uh, because the value of midpoint is less than zero. Else, if uh, the uh, value of f at midpoint is greater than zero, uh, then we're going to recursively uh, search the interval, half interval, um, from um, the negative point uh, to the uh, middle point because there's no need for us to search the interval from the midpoint to the positive point. Otherwise, uh, f of m is zero and we just return the midpoint. Okay, just um, a couple of notes on the asymptotic, uh, asymptotic uh, complex, com com complexity of this uh, procedure. Uh, so. Um, just to be complete in our analysis. Uh, initially, we have the interval uh, whose value is the absolute uh, difference between the negative point and the positive point. All right, this is the module. Okay, so this is, this is where uh, the half interval search begins its work. We give it an interval. And um, then in the second uh, uh, step, we have that interval, right, and discard the other half. In the third step, we uh, have the previous interval, which means that the length of our interval is now um, i over 2 to the second. And uh, the next step, we have um, uh, the interval uh, we obtained in step 3, which means that the length is i over uh, 2 to the third. And we're going to keep on uh, having uh, the previous interval until some step j where the length of our interval is going to be um, i over 2 
to the J and we stop um, uh, when I over 2 to the J is less than or equal to our tolerance value which is for example we can take to be 0, 0, 0, 1 obviously the smaller the tolerance value the better our approximation to the root of uh, f of x equals 0 and, and if we uh, log both sides of this inequality then um, we'll see that uh, j is equal to um, the logarithm of i over t which means that the runtime of uh, half interval search is um, if you're familiar with asymptotic analysis big theta of um, uh, log um, of i over t which means it's logarithmic in the length of the original uh, interval which is this uh, Okay, so um, we will use our implement Perl and uh, Python implementations of this uh, 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 interval search uh, procedure to uh, find the roots, or approximate rather, uh, the roots of uh, several uh, polynomials on specific intervals, so uh, four uh, to be more exact. So the first um, uh, polynomial uh, that we will approximate is uh, going to be uh, x to the third minus uh, 2x um, um, minus uh, 3 on the interval from 1 to 2. Right. So what is the root of um, uh, x to the third minus uh, 2x minus 3 on the interval one to, uh, from 1 to 2? Uh, the second polynomial that uh, whose root we will approximate is going to be x to the fifth minus 5x minus 5 on the root from 1 uh, to 2, uh, on the interval from 1 to 2. The third is um, mm, uh, a line minus x plus 2 on the interval from 1 to 10. And finally, um, let's uh, solve, um, mm, well, approximate. Um, the root of the function uh, cosine x, cosine function, on the interval from um, let's say nine to um, nine to twelve, right? Um, all right, so uh, three pi, somewhere between three uh, times pi and four times pi. So and uh, when, when when I say um, uh, root, that means uh, so find uh, find the root of this. Um, uh, equation cosine x equals zero, uh, where x is in between nine and uh, and twelve. Okay, so in order to solve uh, this uh, problem to code up our solution, we will need to pass functions as parameters in both um, uh, Python and uh, uh, Perl. Now, uh, in um, a Python, this is pretty straightforward because functions can be passed to other functions without any uh, additional effort on our part as programmers, because functions are first-order uh, objects as numbers and hash tables and uh, lists and so forth. So we can define two functions and another function, adder, which takes the function as its first parameter and applies that function to uh, the second parameter. So if we we can pass add two to adder and three, and then print the result, and the result will be five, right? Because add two applied to three will um, uh, return five, and adder of add three and five will return eight because um, adder three will um, uh, add three to five and gets us eight. So five eight, no surprises. Now we can also pass native functions. So we import math and math defines the native cosine function, the module math in Python. So we can pass math cosine to adder and apply it say to the value of five and get this result. All right. You can actually check your calculator uh, and uh, get your calculator out and see if your calculator gets the same result. Um, all right. Uh, now, in in Perl, uh, that is not as straightforward in the sense that uh, functions are not first order objects. So we have to opt for a C-like solution. We cannot pass functions as uh, uh, objects, but we can pass references to functions in the same way as in C. We can pass 
pointers to functions. So uh, let's say if we define uh, add2 and add3 as two procedures, the first one adds uh, two to its parameter and the second uh, adds uh, three to its parameter, and then we can find the uh, we can subroutine uh, define the subroutine adder uh, which uh, will take a reference to a function. A reference is a scalar; it's just the address uh, of the function. So this is the reference, and this is the argument, and uh, uh, we get that uh, by unpacking the uh, argument list uh, underscore, and then we're going to return uh, the result of applying um, the reference, right, dereferencing that function, and applying it to the value of the scalar x. So this is what it looks like in Perl, and now we can um, obtain the references, which is uh, backslash and add two gives us the scalar reference, the number, which is a reference to add two, and uh, backslash and add three gives us the reference to the subroutine add three, and um, we can uh, now uh, go to the uh, command line and run this adder.pl uh, from the command line and um, get the same results as we got uh, in um, a Python, so 5 and 8. With um, um, a cosine, right, um, uh, so what about, what about uh, getting a reference to the cosine? Well, um, one, of the, uh, one of the solutions, uh, there's no easy way to get the reference to a native uh, uh, Perl function. If there is one, please let me know. So, but we can uh, uh, provide our own simple wrapper, so we can define a, a subroutine wrap cosine, which essentially will call the cosine, uh, the native uh, cosine function in its body, and then we can obtain the reference to the wrap cosine, um, right? So cosine return, right, return wrap cosine just applies the cosine to its first argument, and now we can, oops, we can uh, obtain the reference to a rep cosine and um, uh, call it, let's say, on the value of um, 10, right, and see what we, what we get, all right, so this is the value of the cosine. All right, happy hacking, and this is to be continued.